Good afternoon. I'm Representative Gail Laviel, standing here in the State House on the very last day of our session. It's been a long session and a long time to wait to answer a lot of the questions that people have had about what is going on in Hartford. Perhaps the one issue that was the most troubling to everyone in our area was the possibility of forced school regionalization. Today, as I stand here, and there are still a few hours to go, about nine to be exact, in the legislative session, but as I stand here, there are no live bills that carry any language that either mandates or studies forced regionalization of schools in Connecticut. This is because of you. It's because of the people of Connecticut. But I have a few things to say to you about it. One is that there's a history here. We spotted this. I'm very grateful, uh, working together with colleagues in my caucus. Uh, we were able to lift the veil on some of the legislation that had been proposed by the administration and by the majority party to mandate regionalization of schools. We did it early so that it was out there from the very, very beginning. I remember bringing it up in the Education Committee so that everyone would know that it was there. Later on, we found it was in the Planning and Development Committee, too. But when it came to light, it caught fire because the idea of having someone tell you how your children are going to be educated without your having any voice is very alarming to a lot of people. And this time it was. It wasn't a question of money. It wasn't a question of taxes and spending and all of the things that have caused Connecticut's deficits and horrible financial situation. It was emotional. It had to do with people's children and our education system. And because of that, people became very active in opposing it. And I know just more than 10,000 voices alone on our Facebook page, um, more than 5,000 pieces of testimony that came into the Education Committee against these efforts to do forced regionalization. Uh, of those 5,000, about two of them supported it, the rest were against. Your voices were loud enough so that members of the majority party began to realize that this was a big mistake. And at that point, they reacted and looked to see what could be done. But I want to warn everyone about something. Now that we've gotten to the end of this particular session, with no movement on that issue, and it's all calmed down, Here's what you're going to hear. You're going to hear that people like me, that Republicans in the, in the legislature, were fear-mongering, that this was never going to happen to begin with, that it was a twinkle in somebody's eye, that we were making it up. And I'm here to tell you today that we weren't. There were pages in the governor's budget book, which I am quite happy to photograph and send out. In fact, I will that talked about redistricting and consolidation of schools and when it would be done and how it would be done. There were bills in the Education Committee, three of them to be specific, one a governor's bill, which did exactly the same thing and some even went further, like Senator Looney's bill. There was a bill in the Planning and Development Committee and then there was another bill in the Planning and Development Committee that talked about shared services in general, because this has been a theme in this legislature for the entire time that I've been here. I'm in my ninth year. And particularly when Brendan Sharkey was the Speaker of the House, this began to be a real primary goal of the majority party. It is not gone. There are still ideas floating around about doing this, but it will be, it will be probably more light-handed to start. 
but remember, the idea was that some towns have more discretionary money available to pay property taxes. And with the state in such dire straits, there is still a desire to allow the state to get access to the money that has been paid for property taxes in those towns. So be wary. Just because there's no live bill today, there may be more. And it's always, always somewhere just, just at the bottom of the radar screen. And I'm not making it up and I'm not fear-mongering. I'm remaining very calm as we did through this process and it worked because we were logical and everyone, all of you came and spoke your minds. That's what it takes. It's not we legislators who can move other legislators to take action or not take it in this case. It's members of the public, the people who elect us. You did it. You'll do it again if you have to. And I am so proud to represent you. And let's hope we don't have to do it again for a while. Thank you all for all that you've done.